uh, once he had a chance to recruit him, once we had a chance to recruit him, he's in the portal. He's uh, just always impressed. Um, you know, again, just another guy that's really all about the right thing. It's all about winning. Trey's done about all he can do individually in terms of his stat sheet at the Division One level. And I think the next step for him, um, you know, is to play on this stage in a winning program. But definitely a guy that I think um, could be a great pro one day, maybe sooner than later. Um, but just a talented guy that really fits in our locker room. Proud to be his coach and looking forward to you guys uh, spending time with him and ultimately our fan base. I think, again, the idea is as soon as our fan base connects with these players, uh, this, this will be kind of the foundation of what we're trying to do here in terms of uniting the family. <clears throat> we'll take questions for Trey. Just raise your hand, please. Bob, go ahead. Trey, what's the, what's the most unique thing you've experienced in Austin so far? Mm, I'd pro honestly, I'd probably just say the guys because Coming from so many different backgrounds and having so many transfers, you you wouldn't think that we would gel as quickly as we did. But I guess us all being transfers kind of gave us something to relate to. So we're all kind of experiencing this place at the same time together. How are you adjusting to the city? I love it. Yeah. Honestly, I love it. Every single day, you experience something new. And there's there's so many opportunities out there. You just got to go grab them. Right here, front left. Hey, so um, just a month ago, you held the first annual Trey Matrix Summer Basketball Camp uh, in Pittsburgh. Could you uh, tell us briefly what that was all about and what we did do it? So, I mean, that was just the, the short break we had. It was just an opportunity for me to get back home and, and see the younger kids and try to influence them a little bit. So it was really an opportunity for me to get in there and interact with them and kind of just develop relationships and develop my brand in Pittsburgh as far as that goes. And I think we had a, we had a great show out. I think we had a, a good couple of days over there and, and everybody went home and learned something new. Did y'all play defense in that camp or was it just a bunch of jump shots? <laughs> there was, was a lot of post hooks in the camp, some ball handling, you know. T Tony there? <laughs> yeah. Had to be some defense going on. Yeah, there was, there was some defense going on, some raised voices, you know. <laughs> Trey, Tyler Feldman from KU, also from Pittsburgh. Just curious, uh, who were some of the guys that you looked up to in the Pittsburgh area basketball-wise growing up? Um, honestly, I kind of I kind of felt like I kind of paved my own way when I was growing up in Pittsburgh because there's not, there wasn't many people from Pittsburgh that you could really say like made it out or whatever it may be. But uh, I was at Pitt basketball games a lot. I, I really loved that atmosphere. And then um, actually Cameron Johnson, he, as I was going through the rankings, just like seeing him kind of develop, because I, I played pickup with him a couple of times and just watching his game develop, it was like something just kind of turned inside me that I knew it's possible for me to. Keenan, right? Keenan Moore from so Trey, nice to meet you first of all. Uh, you were a star at UMass. What's it like to come into a new team surrounded by other guys who star on their teams as well? It's just another opportunity, honestly, because um, being it wasn't really always about being a star for me. It was, uh, I obviously loved my time at UMass and I wouldn't change it for the world because I learned so many things while I was there. But coming here and being surrounded by other guys that are called stars is just another opportunity. There's just another level to practice every single day. You have to bring it every single day. You're going to get exposed. So it's just, it's been a pleasure for me, honestly. Back, back up. Uh, Jason Kinnader, Texas Student Television. What set Coach Beard and Texas apart from the other schools you were exploring during the transfer portal process? So obviously I was in the portal for a, a lengthy amount of time. But I just, I just kind of knew from my first phone call with Coach Beard, it was like there was just a, a, di a different energy to the phone call. There was, he wasn't necessarily so concerned about the basketball portion. He was concerned about me as a person. And that just, that just told me right away that he's looking for the, the right people to build the right culture here.
Bob, what is, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your game and what you think some of the best parts of it? Um, I'm going to go with the versatility. Uh, I, can, I can pretty much do whatever you need me to do. And over my time here, I've, I've developed in, in, in an amazing way that I just I bring it every day. I push myself every single day, and I'm starting to do some things that I didn't know I was even capable of. How about defensively? Defensively, I've made it. You, you can ask coach. I've, I've made some strides defensively. It's a process. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an ongoing process, but we made some strides. <laughs> Hi, Trey, Christina Wong, David Texan. Um, so your former head coach, Matt McCall, constantly praised your work ethic during your time at UMass. Um, just walk me through your mindset when it comes to setting up the play and accepting new challenges. So for me, it's more of a day-by-day -day process because I know that I'm nowhere near where I know I can be. So I wake up every day just thinking about what can I do today to make it better than yesterday. What can I do today to improve just a little bit? Because in the long run, you put all those days together and you can accomplish something amazing. Bob, uh, are you are you a Sixers fan or because you're from Pittsburgh, you hate Sixers? Like how's the uh, so for me, I just I kinda jump from team to team, to be honest. I'm a, I'm a big LeBron guy. But like there wasn't there wasn't any necessarily bias with the Sixers or anything like that. But uh, fan of Joel Embiid in his game as well. But I think the the Sixers are, might be on a little cusp to make a little turn here soon. But we'll see. How, how do you think you guys have, have gelled as a group coming from so many different spots? How, how difficult has that been? Uh, I know you said you're, you've come along a little better, but I mean, how, what what are some of the different So honestly, I think, I don't think it's really been that difficult because like I said earlier, I think it's like we all have something to relate to when it comes to being in the transfer portal and whatnot. So this is all a new experience for most of us. And it's like when you come into a new situation with guys who haven't been through it before either, it's like you just come together and you work through it together and then the guys that have been here have been an amazing help to us adjusting as well. So go ahead, back look. So Texas is very rich in here when it comes to the center position. Is there any former Texas basketball center that you try to emulate or that you've been kind of looking up to while getting used to being with the program or are you kinda of, like you said with the Pittsburgh thing, kinda of trying to pave your own way? Yeah, I'd probably say I'm more I'm more trying to pave my own path because um no two people are the same. So it's like I I have to develop myself in different ways and work on different things than past guys have done because the, the game has changed as well. So you have to be able to do some different things. So I'm just really focusing on my craft and improving and everything that I can. Back right, Cameron. Uh, Trey, although a lot of you guys are going through this new process with the new program, do you feel like the transfers at least have similar motivation? We've had individual success. Coming here is about team success. Yeah, so that just that comes down to everyone's character, honestly, because a lot of the times you can you can come across to those those so-called stars that will have a big ego or something like that, but nobody's like that on this team. Everybody wants to see the person next to them get better, and we push each other every single day. I have one last one for Trey. No, I'm good. That, that actually that actually sounds really rare. That there's not an there's not somebody. Yeah, that's that's what makes us special. We're we're gonna do something special this year. Uh, just a quick thing. So you're a, obviously a really good player, um, excellent NBA prospect. If you were given the chance to cash in on any like a name, image, likeness, sponsorships, would you consider that, or are you just more focused on? Um. It would depend on what it was, but um, as of now, I'm just focusing on my craft, and then whatever opportunities come to the table, I'll run it by the people it has to be ran by, and then if it's something that 
is positive for the image I'm trying to portray, then yeah. Trey, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Question for Coach, raise your hand, please. Uh, go ahead and start. Can we start with the defense? It's pretty Let's, impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Let's start with the defense. What, uh, where do you think he needs to make the most improvements on that? Trey's a talented guy. You know, he, uh, he joined our team about halfway through the summer, um, plus or minus a couple days. So he had basically half the off-season time uh, with John Rowley that the other guys did, um, and he caught up pretty quickly. You know, I think he lost um, – something around 12 pounds in the first four weeks, kind of shaping his body. Um, he actually increased his vertical. I think he's right around a 38-inch vertical. Last time they checked, he could, he could easily be a guy that has a 40-inch vertical, uh, continuing to work with Coach Riley. So he's just, uh, you know, he's training in the right way. He works extremely hard. He has that humility that you guys saw, uh, but I would agree with some of the questions. I mean, he is a really good player. Um, he's a positionless guy. I don't, I don't see him as a center. He can really shoot the ball. Might be. Might be our best shooter, just sitting out there, just launching shots. I know we got some really good ones, Jace Febris and others, but Trey can really shoot. So um, I think defensively, it's just going to be more of a um, making it uh, a priority, making it an emphasis, like trying to impact the game on every single possession. Um, you know, in the past, he's been a high minute guy that just plays the game, and he can certainly be in that category with us too, with his talent. But we're trying to challenge him to putting his his mark on each possession. Defensively, he's a talented guy. He's a, kind of a natural shot blocker. Um, he's also got the size to wall up. Uh, he's really good in the pick and roll coverages. So he's, he's, got, he's got quick feet. Um, so we have really high expectations for him defensively. And I think it all starts just with his willingness to buy in and, and view himself that way. And then just in terms of three guys we've talked to so far, some of the things you've said. Um, the gelling process seems to be going really well with these guys. Everything seems really good. What kind of adverse situations are you trying to put them in to challenge that? Because you know you go hit it during the season. How do you try to do that now to prepare in any way you can for something? That's yeah, for sure. I'd agree with that. I mean, right now we're in a kumbaya. I mean, we're, you know, it's first day at church camp. We're still out in the parking lot. You know, mom and dad, we got the peanut butter sandwiches and, like, you know, the air condition's working on the van. And, you know, nobody's broken up with their girlfriend yet. So, I mean, like, we're. You know, we, we were first to admit that, you know, we've had very little adversity. Um, now, what I would tell you, the competition in practice and the competition with individual guys and in workouts, whether it's shooting competitions, practice, weight room, the competition has been real. And that creates a little bit of adversity because in competition, you know, you don't win every competition. So we've had enough internal uh, kind of self-created adversity this summer and all season. We, we feel pretty good about where we are, but we, we understand what's coming. Um, you know, until you get knocked in the mouth, you know, you can't even really talk about toughness. And that's coming soon, you know. Uh, our non-conference schedule, um, official practice starts next week, just kind of amping it up. You know, simply stated, just more reps, more hours, more days. And from a coaching standpoint, um, you know, we'll do some things to, to create self-inflicted adversity as well. Can you do anything like have referees call terrible fouls and, you know, put guy, try to put guys in that situation? That kind of like, how do you? Is there some stuff specifically you can do like that that really challenges them? Yeah, to me, uh, to me, it starts just with the relationship you have with each player. Like, I, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about how to get Timmy or Drew or Jace or, or you know Trey to do something. I spend a lot of time thinking, hey, when, when can I get face to face with these guys and tell them what's expected? So, never been one of those guys in coaching that kind of tries to figure out a way to get to the finish line. I just tell the guy, hey, this is what we're doing. Um, but with that being said. We'll tell the player what's to expect it. So, I mean, one example of many would be Courtney Ramey, you know, a guy that I always had a lot of respect for coaching against him. He's from St. Louis. He's got some toughness to him. That's who he is. But coaching against Courtney, I thought that a lot of times his mood kind of changed and the consistency, maybe a bad call, frustration with the teammate or something, really challenged him to kind of take the next step to being stone-faced. Um, and, and he's done great. Not good, great. And so, yeah, some days, like, I think yesterday was game point. His team had four or five wins. I just call a fake travel. Hey, travel and get up. And, and, and the old Ramey, I thought, might have kind of freaked out. The, the new Ramey is stone face. He knows, he understands. So, um, yeah, we do some of those things in coaching for sure. Back up,
So there's been all the talk about how the transfers have meshed. How's it been for the four returning players surrounded by completely new teammates and a completely new coach and coaching staff? Yeah, I don't want to speak for those guys. It'd be a great question for them. Um, what I would say on that is like, it's interesting, right? Because, you know, they're new players too, because we're a new coaching staff. You know, like if, if, if Shaka was still here, then he's got those four guys back, and then he adds transfers, it's different, but everybody's new. So this is a new Texas for those four returners too, right? It's a new locker room, it's a new style, it's new everything. It's, it's everything. I don't, I, don't, I don't think anything hasn't changed in some way. So everybody's new, including the four returners. Um, but I would say those guys have done, done a good job, like just, just being leaders in terms of Austin. You know, hey man, you park over there, you're gonna get a parking ticket. Park right there, you're gonna get the boot. Park right there, they're gonna tow your, tow your, tow your car, you'll never see it again. So just, you know, like, we're trying to understand, those guys have just done a great job, myself included. Like, uh, this summer, about every restaurant I went to was recommended by Brock or one of those four guys, like, hey, where should I go eat tonight? Um, but in terms of, like, the program, again, you guys understand this, right? Like, they're new players, too, because the coaching staff and culture's new. Chris, you said you watched a lot of Trey. How does that process work this day and age? Are you watching during the season, or do you find a guy, he's in the portal, and then you're like, okay, I need to go do my homework on this player? A little of both. It starts with me that I'm just a college basketball fan. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't watch Will of Fortune. You know, I did, I did think Vanna White was really hot back in the day. I'm sure she still is, but I don't. Uh, you know, I watch Ted Lasso, you guys know that, but like, I don't play golf. Like, so I love basketball. You know, like I watch preseason NBA, I watch college. I, you know, so a lot of it is just that. So like, you know, last year we're working, the main TV is the next opponent, but we've got other TVs. Hey man, that's UMass, man, that kid can play. So I probably saw a dozen of Trey's games just as a, as a college basketball fan, as the other guys too, Dylan, Timmy, all of them. Um, then yeah, it's just with the portal, you just literally, we find out when you guys find out. It literally, we just check the portal every five minutes on the hour when a guy pops. Then you know we're prepared because we know who the best players in the country are. Um, now, in terms of now the rule, the new rules, not sitting out and all that. Is there a next line of scouting? I mean, I think so. I think anybody that tells you different wouldn't be truthful. You know, like in the NBA, I know like uh, uh, Pat Knight's one of my best friends and. Um, at one point, you know, he was with the Pacers, and he was a scout, but he was a scout of other NBA teams. So it's like internal NBA personnel. Well, that's a pretty cool job, right? And uh, that way with free agency, they've already got their databases going. So there's, there's a little bit of that going on in college basketball, no doubt about it. Tyler, in the back. Chris, not necessarily basketball related, but given your last name and your facial hair, uh, looking back at old photos, you didn't always – you know, give purpose to your last name by having a beard. So I'd like to know the origins of Chris Beard with a beard. Yeah, I thought you were going to go Ted Lasso there because the Coach Beard assistant coach. <laughs> uh, no, I think uh, trying to be factual, man, I, sometimes my memory fails me a little bit, but I think uh, I think we grew out the beard uh, uh, during COVID-19, and I know uh, my three daughters and Randy were fans of it, so I just rolled with it. Um, then, of course, the superstitious kicks in. You know, if we'd have dropped a couple of games, it, it would have never happened. But I think we won some games out of the gate, and now it's just continued. So, you know, it's a lot easier. Uh, I don't got to uh, shave much. That makes life simpler. Um, other than that, really, it's just it's uh, the four main women in my life like it, so we've been ro rolling with it. I'm not great at it, though. I don't understand the product game. You know, it's got the oil, then the, the paste. I don't get all that. Uh, the guys that do it themselves, I can't do that because I do it. It's all messed up, so I have to like. There's a little bit of maintenance involved, um, but overall, just just kicking it. Keep it right? Hey, coach. Um, so back to Trey for a second. You touched on it a little bit, but um, how does Trey sort of fit into the position's basketball motion offense? That you like to talk about? Okay. Just a versatile guy. He can score on all three levels. He's a really good three-point shooter. He's got great mid-range game, facing the basket and back the basket, then around the paint. He's a creative finisher. Uh, he's a good athlete. Uh, I think by like NBA standards, he's probably not an elite athlete, but he makes up for that with skill. He is as skilled a forward that, that is in college basketball. He can do a lot of things. Um, he can really pass the ball. He's got a poise to him. The same kind of composure that, you know, up here, he's he, he talking like he's LeBron. You know, he's got that poise and that, that IQ and that, Magic Johnson personality. Well, that translates on the floor too. Never gets kind of rattled. 
sometimes it can almost be misinterpreted as, man, is that guy playing as hard as he can, but he's just so smooth that the game just kind of comes easy for him. Um, and on defense, he can do a lot of things too. He can guard different positions. Uh, one of the best things he's got going on defensively is his intel intelligence, his ability to anticipate. He sees things before they happen a little bit. Just a good player. So uh, we definitely noticed it with Trey Mitchell and uh, noticed it kind of like every other player we've talked to here. All of them seem to be like pretty humble and have a real team focused mindset. Is that something you were looking for when you were reaching out to Trey Mitchell in the portal and stuff? Or did that just kind of come with them or is that something you're trying to like, build back? Yeah, nothing to do with transfer portal, but everything to do with our culture. We look for the same things in our student managers, our coaches, our trainer, our weight coach, our SID, our assistants. Um, you know, I mean, I, I just believe that uh, humility is one of the greatest assets ever. You know, I, I got no interest in surrounding myself with people every day that think they're better than the next guy. Um, we study cultures as much as anybody. Right down I-35, the Spurs, it's an elite culture, right? And I think those guys, the terminology is you better get over yourself pretty quick to be a Spur. You got to have a sense of humor. You got to be able to make fun of yourself and stuff. And, just studying Coach Pop and those guys, especially with the big three, Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker, the way they interacted. That's what we've always strived for. And we've been doing it for a long time. And our junior college teams years ago had a had a humility about it. And um, you know, I think uh, you know, I don't think you can win championships when you got guys in that locker room that think they're better than the next guy. Now you gotta have some alpha, you gotta have some personality, you gotta have some toughness, and we have that. You know, don't get it twisted. We've got some guys that um, you know, that, that have their moments, myself included. But I think at the core of it is just, uh, you know, you got to have some humility. Like, you know, the world doesn't revolve around you. The university doesn't revolve around us. Like, we're all lucky and blessed to be here. And that's just kind of the idea to, to have that Texas swagger. Uh, the, the Texas brand is real. The power is real. Um, you know, it's not easy to play here. It's not easy to coach here. Um, you know, you got to embrace the hate. You know, I, you know, I imagine it's not easy to play for the Yankees or the Lakers or the Cowboys, um, and, that, and that's what this deal is all about. This, this deal isn't for everybody. So you got to have that confidence and you got to have that, you know, willingness to back it up because you know what's coming at you. But, the, but the other, on the other hand, you got to have some humility to be in our locker room. Period. So you show the shots even as you. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a day-to-day -day, uh, process around here with Scotty Mac. Back left, Coach Fran was chilling with here yesterday. Took to Twitter after and spoke very highly of Jalen Tyson. How has Jalen been doing getting acclimated as one of those lone young guys in a team filled with guys who've been there before, been top players on top teams in the country? Yeah, Jalen's doing great. Uh, he's a guy that I really uh, believe in, right? We've, we've, we've recruited him twice. Uh, he's a talented guy, and uh, he comes from a great family. His mom and dad got high level coaching in high school and on the circuit, and also with individual work in Dallas. He's around some real basketball people. He's a talented guy. He's got a unique story. One of you guys will pick up on it, but he's not a, he was a guy that wasn't highly recruited as a freshman. And then three years later, he's one of the best players in the country. And, um, you know, might have been a McDonald's All-American if the COVID year would have, wouldn't have kept people from seeing him. Um, so he finds himself in a unique uh, position here that he's playing with some veteran players. I thought Fran said it best. I mean, if Jalen runs his own race, it's going to be a special, and um, I'll put no time frame on that. It might be a quick race, uh, uh, but it's going to be his own individual journey, but he certainly has the benefit of playing with these veterans every day. Um, but we're high on Jalen, as we are our other freshmen. With Gavin um, and Cole, it's going to be a big part of this year's team. And then Devin, even though he's got the one-year college basketball underneath his belt, uh, he's still a young guy. And, um, you know, I, I, I think, uh, you know, it's my role to, to remind people that from time to time that, uh, I mean, Devin, is one of the best young players in college basketball, along with Jalen and others. Last one, Akeem. Hey, Coach. Um, <coughs> your players, we've noticed uh, from the media availabilities, are very media savvy, which partially comes from their, uh, their experience already. But why is having a good relationship with the media so important to you and the team? I think Scotty Mack spends a lot of time with these guys right before they come out here, you know, so he's putting his brand on it. No, these veterans, they've been just sitting their first rodeo, you know. Um, that's a good one. relationship with the media. I mean, to me, it's important because I respect all you guys. You got a job to do. Uh, it's also it's important, a little bit selfishly, but in a lot of ways, you guys are the connectors between us and the most important people, our fan base, um, you know, our student body. So um, that's a great question. I ask me that one next week. Give me some time to think on that.
The other thing I probably should have started with, guys, but I, I always uh, I care about these guys and the efficiency of their time. And these players are getting ready, so we try to make it efficient when they get out there. But a couple just kind of notes on our program that are pretty, pretty proud. So we sit here today, I think we have right under 1,200 new deposits for season tickets, um, which I've been told by our ticket office and our administration, it's an all-time record for as long as they've been keeping records here at Texas basketball. Uh, this has never been done before. So you think about that. I didn't say 1,200 seats. I said 1,200 accounts. So there's almost, uh, I think, over 1,100 new accounts right now of people trying to get in to get season tickets during this last year in the Irwin Center. So. That's pretty powerful, and I, I'm, that's, uh, I'm appreciative. Um, I'm humbled by that. Um, my, my promise to the fans or anybody that's considering spending their time and hard-earned money to, to make this a part of your life is, you know, we're going to do our part. We're working extremely hard. We're proud of the players we put on this the, the floor. We're not going to be those coaches that put the asterisks by the next year. Well, this first year doesn't count. This first year counts, uh, period. And so that's kind of a positive thing that we have uh, looking forward to it. Um, anybody out there, I just encourage to call the ticket office. Uh, they're taking deposits now. We're very soon, they're about to start issuing seats and, and things like that, but it's an exciting time. Uh, reminder to everybody, last year in the Frank Irwin Center, right, we're going to celebrate the success of this place, the Irwin family, all the coaches, staff, players, season ticket holders, fans that came before us. Um, obviously, the future is bright with the Moody Center. Drive by it every day. Um, but we're also going to live where our feet are this year, and we're going we're to celebrate the, the tradition of this great venue and, and, and all the past success of Texas basketball. So things are off to a great start with the season ticket uh, deposits, and I want to tell you guys that. To me, that's great news. Um, I want to get that to you guys today. Anything else, fellas? Thank you very much. Thanks, all. Thanks, sir.